joy for us to be with you again in our beautiful land of Guyana, in the Caribbean and further field. We thank you especially for joining us week after week. Now our prayer is that as you continue to view this program, God will bless you and your family. So stay tuned. God bless you. This evening we want to continue our discussion on the implications of having these family meetings. Um, we, last week we concluded by examining the life of one Jabez and we recognize that if one is going to be delivered, if you're going to, to rise from all these ill circumstances that you might be facing, the recognition of God is critical to your deliverance regardless of what those circumstances might be. And so um, Jabez was exposed, you know, to a particular teaching um, that he received. And so he's a perfect example of how uh, honor and dignity, prosperity can come your way even as you recognize God and what God is capable of doing. So regardless of the pressures and the pains that you might be going through, you might be a mother, you might be a father, regardless of the pains and the pressure you might be going through, the critical thing is for us to recognize who God is and what he is capable of doing. And we saw that in the life of Jabez. Um, the scripture tells us clearly, Jabez prayed to God that God will be with him. And this is something that we need to do, uh, you know, as, as, as God's creation. We need to, to, to pray that he will be with us in our decision making. Sometimes we make decisions and uh, we feel that, you know, we can just make decisions like that. But is God the center of those decisions? Um, he prayed that God would, would enlarge his, his territory. You're looking for prosperity. You're looking for blessing. You know, it, it, this comes from God because, or these things come from God. If you try to achieve things in yourself, I can tell you, you know, the things you might achieve, yes, but those things will be just for a moment. But when you, you know, put your faith and your trust in God, I can tell you those things that God will give you, um, it, it, it will be enduring. And Jabez also prayed pray that God would bless him. True blessing comes from God. It's not, you know, in the abundance of things that you may have. But once the hand of God is upon you, those things will come and they will remain with you. Because no one can take away what you would have, you know, what God would have, would have given to you. So we want to continue our discussion uh, this evening on the implications of uh, family meetings. Gentlemen. Uh, the family meeting in this, in this sense uh, was one that nobody really called. Uh, we have a background, a background of a genealogy that's really uninterested. When you look at the background, you want to know who are these people. Then suddenly, we, a name jumps out, Jabez. His mother said, described his circumstances of birth. She said she bore him in, in pain, hence his name. A reminder of that pain, that period of that kind of suffering. And um, I wonder, we wonder whether there's, there's dialogue in homes these days between parents and children. When parents tell their children the circumstances of their birth, I think it's, it's useful if a child um, somehow gets that information about when you were born, this is what was happening in my life, in our lives, as your parents, this is what was happening in the family. Um, some people really come into this world at a time according to others, that they should not have come. But there's a God mm -hmm. who superintends over the activity of, 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 of mankind. And um, that's why you must never allow anyone to write you off. You legitimate. Yeah. Uh, you might be born in, in, in kind of unfortunate circumstances, you might be living initially in some tough, tough situation, pain, 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 pain. So one of the other words, the, the, the mother day word is abuse and violence and so on. But Jabez, 
change this equation by his prayer. Yeah. So Jabez was not just consumed by what was happening at the human level. Jabez lifted his eyes above yeah. the sun and sought the solution. What is important to note here is that Jabez just didn't pray, but who did he pray to? The scripture is clear. He prayed to the God of Israel. And the first thing I would like to point out here is that he asked God for a blessing. He said, oh, that you would bless me. And the scripture reminds us that the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. We don't know the circumstances under which Jabez was conceived. The, the political atmosphere, the social and economic atmosphere at that time. Nevertheless, he sought God as a young man. He sought God and he, saw, he went after the blessing of the Lord. It reminds me of Jacob, you know. He said, I would not lose you until you bless me. And I think we can learn from this as parents, as children. You know, we can hold fast to God because his promises are yea and amen to them that believes. He wants the best for us. And as we call on him, as we hold fast to his promises, he will do what only he can do for us. I smile because I get the impression as I read, as we go through this program, and the programs before, that God seemed to have delight in blessing the unexpected, you know? Those that we sometimes don't believe deserve a blessing. I look at how Isaac, he blessed Jacob. Jacob was such a supplanter that even God had to change his name. None of us will believe that he is the one should, but he desired the blessing. I looked at how how um, he switched his hands when it came to Joseph's son and made sure that the right one was blessed. And here again, Jabez falling in the middle of folks who I don't even know where they come from. The mother has described even his birth as being um, a, a painful, unusual circumstance surrounding birth. But yet still, this young man called on God. Recognize that there is a God who can move you from where you are to where you should be. Mm -hmm. Call on Him. And that God. You know what I find? <laughs> Ready or not, life goes on. Now, Jabez's mother was in that painful circumstances, and we pondered whether, you know, it is this physical pain. But I don't believe at all it was physical pain the Bible was uh, talking about because all words um, ought to be physical, painful, painful. But they are stress and mental fatigue that goes along at the time of birth. What is the circumstances? What are the circumstances at the end? Life goes on. Ready or not, JBS is coming. So you've got to know that whatever situation you find yourself in, if you call on the Lord, God is able because he was smitten for our pain. And if we call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will deliver us out of all our circumstances. We don't know whether Jabez was a farmer, whether he was a warrior, a, a lawyer, a doctor. We don't know anything about this. We don't know if he worked for the minimum wage, if he was a middle class person. We have no such information. What we know about him is somehow his introduction as, as, as Pastor David just alluded to, his, 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 his introduction was very uncomfortable. It was filled with pain. But as this young man grew, somehow he understood, you know, he looked at life. Life apparently was not dealing with them fairly. And um, he wasn't prospering. But this guy looked at what was happening to him under the sun, like all of us. You know, you wake up and you feel depressed, you look out and you say, man, we're not doing well, my family's not doing well. You come to those kind of conclusions. But Jabez did not stop there. Jabez looked above the sun. Mm -hmm. And 
this encouraged him to pray. As we heard earlier, he prayed and he asked God, listen, the first thing I want you to do for me, I want you to bless me. I'm asking you for divine favor. Please, bless me. I've come with a minus. I can't make it in this life without you. Please, bless me. Don't for one moment believe that this was an isolated event. Rather, this is a template of how God works. Amen. And just as how we did it in the Old Testament, in the ancient time, the same God is doing it and can do it today. Notwithstanding the circumstances that you might be going through, I believe we as a panel, we really want to underscore the value of prayer. You see, when you call, like Jabez did, when you call upon God out of a sincere heart, this is what you're actually doing. You're actually connecting divinity with humanity. And once there's that connection, once there's that, 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 that power resolute in your circumstance, the best is yet to come. Sometimes we're guilty of, because of our pain and what we're going through, we're guilty of calling on other people, yeah. trying to find a, a solution perhaps even within ourselves. We, we look to, to different ones, different organizations, which might not be good, might not be bad rather. But why not seek God first? Why not allow divinity to, to, to mingle Excellent. with your circumstance and, and see what will happen? The best Surely, is to he, Surely he took up our pain and carried <coughs> our suffering. That is sufficient reason to call him three and four. Recently, I was telling some friends that we are God that had actually brought me up. And I'm sure many of my colleagues here can testify. And I remember as we were chatting, we asked them if you ever ate Buruburu. And someone asked me, who's Buruburu? And I said to them, you know, that flip the tree, that grape that grows at the flip the tree. It's a grape, we grow grape. And, uh, <laughs> 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 and, and I was asking if you ever had the black sage berry, they asked me, black sage berry? <laughs> where, where did that come from? But I have watched how, in spite of the deficiency or the lack in the earlier stages of our life, as you rest your confidence on God, how He's capable of moving you, how he's capable of blessing you. Um, I look back today and I am so honored of where God brought me from that it, it hurts my heart if I do not reach out to others because God really has brought us from a very mighty, long way. And I want to submit the same God who has brought me and I'm sure my colleagues can testify is the same God that can bring you. And I want to take it further. The same God that has been able to move your personal life is the same God that is able to move the community. And is the same God that is able to move the, the prayer of Jobez, you know, reminds us that that everybody, you know, we we we, we go through struggles and uh, and uh, pressures. And it is a perfect reminder. And then when you're going through these struggles and these pressures or whatever adverse circumstances you might be faced with, um, who do you rely on? Do you rely on another person like yourself? Um, do you rely on yourself? Because some people, you know, f figure that they have the, the solution to all the problems, problems for other people, problems for themselves. But Jabez, you know, understood something that lots of people miss. Um, and that is there is only one God who is capable and able mm -hmm. to transform your situation, to change your situation. And so this God must be the center mm -hmm. of our activities, the center of everything we do, the center of our plans. You know, men wake up and they have wonderful plans, but they did not consult with <laughs> God. They did not ask God, you know, should I go in this direction? I go and do, I do my own thing. And many times we do those things to our own detriment. And so um, this is a timely reminder that there is a God 
And this God is able to deliver you from your state of, of decadence, from your, your state of, of need. This God is able. You know, you know, what, you know it's important for us to realize that in the case of Jabez, we talked about his beginnings, but in his case, while, not only was it a case of his beginnings being very, well, not very um, good, he was labeled, he was labeled a sorrow maker. Mm -hmm. So from the very start of his life, he had things not in his favor. People may have cursed you, people may have said ill things about you. The fact is, if you do as Jab Jabez did, you can overcome that name that persons have labeled you with. Because he prayed to the God of Israel, he was able to overcome that name which meant sorrow and, be, and, and enjoy great success in his life. So you can also overcome whatever name that people may have labeled you with. Notwithstanding the meaning of his name, and despite the struggles and the pressure that Jacob, Jabez was going through, let us examine the attitude of, Jake, of Jabez. The Bible said he was honorable. And we can see two characteristics being displayed there. One, being earnest. That means he was intense. He was zealous. He was sincere. He was determined. And the Word of God reminds us that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. And let us also examine his humility. The Word of God clearly states, we can also see that his, his attitude, his prayer was directed towards God. So, standing of the prayer we're going through today, we all have that opportunity to tap into a source. Yes. I admire his specificity. Mm -hmm. I learned the word that word from the many, many years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I admire in his prayer, he didn't, you know, scatter all over the place. Yeah. He was very specific. He asked God to bless him. Mm -hmm. Then he asked him to enlarge his for prosperity. And he was, you know, he, somehow this guy understood, if I'm going to be a man of substance, I need to have uh, um, authority. Lord, empower me. And this is how he wasn't seeking empowerment just by himself. He was connecting to the Creator. And, and, and the third uh, principle, he, you know, it's an interesting ask that thy hand might be with me. That thy hand might be with me. Some of us, we walk around with a badge. And that is the badge of authority or connect or connectedness to something or some source, some institution. But this man recognized, if I'm going to make it, I want your hand to be with me perennially. I, I can't make it by myself. I need your, your strength must undergird me. Your strength must protect me. And so in so many institutions, so many times, you know, for us, if you come in behind, you have a bad name. You, you come into this world under difficult circumstances. We need something greater than ourselves to yeah. undergird us. That when everybody else says, this person can't make it, his hand will bring us through. Yeah. And this guy is really showing us, in this family, he's showing us the way forward. Sometimes, you know, the, the other badge facts that we walk around with is the circumstances at work and we fail to God uh, to seek his You know, um, last night I was reflecting um, there's a sister, an elderly sister who was passed in this fellowship and I was reflecting on um, my wife and I asked her if to tell this child what is the reason or why is he so straight now? We, uh, I remember Bert um, when he was born um, you could have rolled size four football uh, between his legs without them touching the side. And we were concerned that um, uh, we looked around the family tree and nobody had uh, both foot as we call it. So we wanted to know where it came from. Um, but we were concerned also. But this took time, almost every day. And she came and she anointed his feet. 
Um, she tied the stores together, trying to straighten them. And over the weeks and the months, eventually, um, those legs were straightened. So it, it brings home the fact, the importance of the family meeting again, where you remind your offspring, your sibling, of some of the difficulties they might have had at birth or in the early life, but the way God can help and how God uses different ones um, to make things better. I happen. love that because I find that we are developing a community where we only see the negatives. And while we must be truthful with our children that about the things that have happened in the past, we need to create an environment of hope and an environment of God being bigger than the circumstances around and God being capable of moving you from, from point A to point B to point Z. And so I pray that we will recognize that God is working and is capable of working in changing situations around us. I think what is critical here also is the fact that Jabez recognized that this situation was beyond him. And he saw God, and like Pastor said earlier, he was very specific. And you know, and I look at the second request to enlarge my territory, his dwelling place. I, he had an understanding of a good man laying up an inheritance for his children's children. And I reflect on my own life, you know, as a young man deciding to remove from my mom and starting in a 10 by 10 and meeting God at that place. And God enlarged my territory to, well, don't let me go there, but to a huge home, you know? And it, what God can do, not because of you, but because of those that will come after you. So it would be wicked for someone to be living in a room, get married and be in a room, and die in that room, not making provision for the, his or her offspring, you know? So like Jabez, not only would God want to bless you, but he can enlarge your territory. You know, the, the, you know what I like about that? Jabez had no intention, you know, living out his name, the meaning of his name. Um, pain. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> we call by a name and, and, and we say, well, look, this is my lot. This is my end. And I'm going to, you know, I, I, I have to live this way. But this man clearly recognized that He's not going to live out this name in pain. He's not going to be going through life um, in pain. And some of us, you know, we operate like that as though there is no hope. But Jabez, you know, he taught us something that with God, all things are possible. Look at how this man's life, you know, was transformed. Look at how he positioned himself in relation to God so that this name may not be lived out. You talk about persons living in, a, in, in, in some small part and you you born there you grow there you make children there then you die there and so on. you do not have to remain the way you are all the time mm -hmm. this god is capable of changing your circumstance of changing your situation you don't have to live out a name that people would have given to you mm -hmm. you can actually change that situation by aligning yourself to god because he is the great deliverer we have a god who wants us to call upon him regardless of your circumstance, regardless of your situation, regardless of where you came from, regardless of your ethnicity. Mm -hmm. He loves us to call upon you. He says, call upon me, and I will hear and answer you. And so Jabez used this opportunity, recognizing his state, where he was, mm -hmm. the name that was given to him, and he called upon God. And God doesn't only want, he doesn't only allow us to call upon him, but he answers. Mm -hmm. He answered Jabez, he answered Jabez's request because he recognized, here Jabez recognized there's a God who's all powerful mm -hmm. and is well able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or ask or even imagine through the power of working in us. You know, I, like the, I like the revolutionary ideas and you just heard, a cry for freedom. Jabez was crying for freedom, for safety, for security, for purity. And I believe that as we reach deep down, we have a, a rich history, a rich foundation, not just scripturally, but as a people. The old Negroes sang a spiritual, and they sang 
don't wait until the battle is over. Shout now. They were convinced that once you engage God, that He was going to work on your behalf. And therefore, one did not have to wait until the process was finished to celebrate. One could shout, no, they had that. Their backs were being opened by whips and, and they were being discriminated against. And as you heard early on, they were intentional. They were not going to live out that situation of sorrow and pain. They dear, even when the economic system kept them out from owning currency that was made out of paper, uh, they couldn't own uh, uh, dollars. They saved coins. And um, they understood that the God that they served, Sunday after Sunday, they walked. The history is there for us, like Jabez. They had a hope led by some deacons along the East Coast historically. They walked to church. And they used that day that Massa gave them mm -hmm. as a day where they talked to their God and received tremendous strength. And while the system did not allow them to read, in the house of God, they were taught how to read. And they empowered themselves. And we have some stories that you and I are familiar with. But we need to see the hand of God, if you could bless me, when they negotiated to purchase lands that were part of the plantation, they turned up with wheelbarrows, mm -hmm. with coins, yeah. not for a bank, yeah. but they had it saved. Yeah. They had that sense that the God like Jabez, yeah. God could enlarge your coast even though you might be a slave. Mm -hmm. That hope comes out of a relationship with God. Yeah. And we don't know where you are. We don't understand your suffering. But we want you to know the same God of Jabez is waiting on you to knock, to ask, to seek him. This is choices. Be blessed. God will make a We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.